before I get started with the story, let me give a shout out to Trill Texas on Twitter for tagging me in this post. And they basically said, like at Torian said, SYG doesn't apply to black people. And if y'all don't know what SYG means, it stands for staying your ground. And this is yet another case of that not working in the favor of black people. Now, this story right here actually stems from something that occurred last year in the articles that I'm going to read is going to go into that. But what I'm also about to talk about is where it's currently at right now and how staying your ground again continue continues to not work in the favor of black people. Like I said, I still have yet to find one black person that this has worked for. And I asked to see if it has worked for five and I still can't get one. But this man's name is Travis Rudolph. He is a former football player. He played for Florida State University and his life basically turned upside down when an ex-girlfriend who he was with, he ended up breaking up with her in, in a fit of rage because she was mad he broke up with her. She sent her brothers to come and basically attack him on his property and he defended himself by killing them like he had to do what he had to do. He tried to use the stand your ground defense. But as you will find out in this story, it did not work in his favor. And this picture that you see right here is him on the stand, I guess, trying to plead his self-defense. And it's not working. Like, he literally got denied a self-defense claim when clearly a self-defense claim was there. That's why many of us, when it came to Kyle Rittenhouse, while many of us, you know, as black people were saying, that doesn't pertain to us because he didn't kill anybody who was black. Keep in mind who he was out there originally going after. And two, he was able to use the self-defense um, thing to have every charge against him dropped. While it's many black people in jail right now, such as Travis Rudolph, who can't even be offered that same opportunity when it's clear cut self-defense. Look at Corey Pujols. I just did a video talking about and breaking down the similarities between him and Ryan House. And they still call that man a murderer. So I'm going to go ahead now and get into the story that was posted March 16th, 2022. The former football player who claimed a stand your ground defense to the first degree murder charge against him will not get will not get to use that defense at trial. Now, look at that. He got hit with a first degree murder charge. <clears throat> first degree, which means premeditated. So you're telling me that he premeditated to kill somebody that came onto his property to attack him. What sense did that does that make? And the fact that that charge actually stuck is saying a lot. But th then again, this is Florida we're talking about here. The judge who heard testimony last week from Travis Rudolph, along with his brother, denied that defense and did not di dismiss the murder or attempted murder charges against him. Rudolph took the stand on Tuesday, March 8th, and said he did what he had to do to protect his life and the lives of his brother and his mother when several men threatened to kill them. That happened the night he said he broke up with his girlfriend in April 2021 in Lake Park and how his ex sent her brother and several men to his house. The question I beg here is why, is, why wasn't she charged with anything as well? But seeing as how they only went after him and apparently his brother as well. Nothing was going to happen to her either. I, I also want to know what the ethnicity of this woman was, because this sounds like some real Karen behavior. Not saying Blue Karen wouldn't do the same thing because, you know, stranger things have happened. But I'm just curious. Rudolph said one of the men punched him and then a brawl began. He said the men were kicking and punching him and his brother saying, you're going to die. Rudolph, it makes me wonder if the, if the people that he took out, if they would have survived, what would the outcome of that have been? Probably the same thing. Rudolph said two of the attackers had guns, so he grabbed an AR-15 pistol he kept in his bedroom for personal protection and then fired 39 shots. I'm in fear of me and my mother's life, so at that time I had a right to defend myself. And they brought guns to them. Like, they had weapons on them as if they were going to kill them too. See what I mean? I keep telling y'all. That self-defense thing and that stand your ground doesn't work for black people. And the thing is, we figured that out a long time ago, and it's still here. It's still prevalent. I said that staying your ground law is one of the most PC, whitest laws on the books. It has never, at least to my recollection, worked in the favor of a black person, no matter what their age or their gender, sexual orientation, none of that. 
as long as you are black, it does not work in your favor. And it doesn't matter where the state, what state it's in. It doesn't have to necessarily just be Florida. It could be any state where this law is applied. He said two of the attackers were in a car and were pointing guns at him. So he fired and kept shooting until he felt there was no longer a threat. Just before Rudolph testified, his brother did and said the ex-girlfriend hit Travis so hard with a liquor b bottle that it was like she was trying to crack his skull. So he got attacked by also by the girlfriend because she aided in the attack. The brother also testified that four or five men came to his house, beat and kicked him and asked for Travis. He said they said, go get your brother because he's dead. Look at all these open threats. They came to his house, made all these open threats, saying he's going to die. They came with guns as if they were really going to do something. He defends himself on his property because of something, because he broke up with his girlfriend and she wanted to be a bitch about it and literally tried to bring people to his house to kill him over a breakup. She's literally the catalyst to all of this. She's the catalyst to why Travis and his brother is in jail. And she's the catalyst to why her, her brother is dead and anyone else that was affected by what happened that's when travis went and got his ar-15 pistol and shot at them he mentioned he didn't think he'd be alive if it wasn't for his brother he testified no doubt in my mind that my life would have been over if my brother hadn't done what he did according to the arrest report travis allegedly shot and killed sebastian john jocks age 21 john jocks died in the car a few blocks from the home where the shooting happened Okay, it sounds to me like she, he didn't kill the brother, but someone did get killed because they didn't specify that this was the brother. Another person was wounded in the shooting. Rudolph was the last witness in the event, uh, evidentiary hearing. It was held on the motion entitled Motion for Declaration of Immunity and Dismissal of Charges, which was filed August 18, 2021. The hearing was held for two days last October and two days last week. A trial date has not yet been set, and the state is not seeking the death penalty. Why should? Why would they want to seek the death penalty? It says that they're not, by the way. I just want to clarify that. It says Rudolph played high school football at Cardinal Newman, college football at Florida State, and in the NFL for the New York Giants. So he was on a professional level. I can't say that I've actually heard of him. Uh, maybe y'all can let me know, but... Yeah, but I think it says I'm looking at this post. It says he goes undrafted, but he signed with the Giants. So it's not like he was a major draft pick, but he did get picked up by the Giants. And yet again, my point has yet been proven that staying your ground does not work in the favor of black people. It just doesn't. It never works. Like they literally want us to be sitting ducks. Like I say, like I said in the previous video, that's why a lot of black people are scared to defend themselves because it's like even when you do defend yourself and you're lucky to survive while defending yourself, you get treated like you're the one that was the aggressor. They came to his house off of the words of a scorned ex who just became scorned in like five minutes because she because he broke up with her. And it sounds like to me he just broke up with her. Like within the same day, and she immediately called them to her to the house, and it makes you wonder, what did she tell her brother and those other guys that made him come over? Because I don't want to believe that they just came over because she said that her boyfriend broke up with her. Like that's no reason to want to come over. I bet she embellished and told a whole lie or lies to get them to come over there, and that reminds me so much of. A Carolyn Bryant. That sounds like a Carolyn Bryant move. Like I said, she's the catalyst of the entire situation. Is she's the reason why he's in jail, his brother's in jail, why and why one of the people that came to the house is dead. It's because of her. And then she hit him with a bottle that cracked over his head. I'm surprised he was actually able able, able to still function after that. But that adrenaline rush, you know, you can you you brush through that pain but wow that is messed up but yet again this this is the america that we as black people dwell in and i keep telling y'all there's there's two americas the america we live in and the america they live in but i hope something can come through for this dude because he's he's getting a bad deal a horrible deal at that
This is the cost that black people have to pay to defend themselves. This is the cost, the price that we pay when we defend ourselves against you know who. Y'all let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe if you are new. Make sure you hit that bell to be notified when I upload a new video or go live.